right, I'm gonna hit record and let's see we'll how, see. Let's see how this sounds, you know? I've never done this before. Actually, that sounds pretty good. All right, let's see here, let's see here. We're gonna check, check, check. All right, am I clipping? All right, good, okay. Turn the mic and the headphones up. That actually sounds pretty good. Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here chilling and recording episode 204 today. And today we are going to be talking about some uh, offensive American practices uh, that could be perceived by certain people abroad. So if you're American and you're planning on doing some traveling once things uh, start to open back up, uh, you might want to pay attention today. So without further ado, I'm here with my partner in crime. We're doing the uh, porch side podcast, I guess, today. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jared is visiting me here in Dexter, and we are uh, socially distancing ourselves as much as we can, and I'm happy to have you back, buddy. How are you? It's good to be back. Uh, you mentioned before we started this that it's been almost uh, two years. We're coming up on two years, and uh, kind of—I guess I didn't think I didn't think about it. But one thing that I did think about is that's true. And in all that time, this is all I ever asked for. And finally, it took a global pandemic, and we get to have our outside episode. I always tried to do this, right? But I think here's the deal. Maybe my problem is I always try to do too much. I'm always like. All right. Well, we got to go camping in the woods. Uh, <laughs> Five days alone, no support. Podcast All we're bringing is a generator spot. to charge a, our computers. <laughs> right, right. Two microphones and a focus. Right. Uh, that's a little aggressive, but I love it. It's a gorgeous day here in Dexter, Michigan. It couldn't be better. I forgot my camera, so you'll see pictures on Instagram. Uh, oh, by the way, follow us. Spread a little love. You will see pictures, but I like an idiot forgot to bring my camera and my mug of tea um and i actually left my house and i was like and i was like maybe three minutes away i was like i should probably grab a mask i'm only going to your house and bas back but just in case who mm -hmm. knows if i have to stop somewhere sure i'm gonna grab a mask Get gas or whatever, exactly yeah. and so um i grab the mask i drive back home so three to five minutes back home get the mask and then as i'm about 30 minutes down the road i'm like oh no i forgot my tea <laughs> and then as i'm like another 10 minutes past that i'm like oh shit i forgot the camera uh but you can still see pictures on translatable podcast on uh instagram also uh twitter on translatable one the number one this is a spread a little love i can't use my drops as much this is a whole now arm contortion game mm -hmm. uh on translatable one the number one and five star views on itunes and stitcher please that would be great uh greatly appreciated um dude so now, I, I do have a confession to make. As we are trying to be as responsible as possible, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into your house if I can avoid it other than to pee, maybe. Yep, that's fair. I still might just go in the backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't really gotten cl closer than this, which is what? Probably four five or five feet. feet, yeah. Probably should be farther apart, but... You know, but I think it's also important... <laughs> it's also important to note that you and I have been taking precautions. We've been staying at home. Um, that's true. You know, now, we it, it feels weird, though, dude, like seeing friends in a time like this where um, I feel pretty safe and comfortable and confident that. And know, this feels so normal, too. Yeah. Like like this doesn't feel like. a Yeah. But I, but at the same time, it doesn't feel normal as well, because it's like when I saw you, I, I was thinking about this earlier. You know, I, I thought when I saw you is my reaction going to be like, try to go up and give you like a high five. Or, yeah. And then I'm like, can't can't be doing that right now. Yeah. Now, I feel like in the in full transparency, I, I will say that I did go to a socially distant happy hour with my coworkers <gasps> Shocking. on Thursday. How was it? Uh, you, and I'll be honest with you, the only reason I went is because I told you I, I lied to get out of the last one. Right. You and, couldn't get out of this one, man. And I, yeah, and I'm like, yep. I can't get out of yep. two in a row. No. <laughs> and well, we uh, talked about it uh, either the last episode or the one before, how... In a lot of cultures, if you say no twice, yeah, that can be kind of the nail in the coffin. Yeah, they're like, okay, he just doesn't he show just up. Doesn't like Seagus, yeah. And, and so, <laughs> right. and, and, and I felt I was mad at myself, not them, because I, right. I was welcome it's to say no, fault. right? But like, I was like, I, 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 like, I was like, this is ridiculous. Why are we doing this? And so I went, 
and I'll, and they were not they didn't no one really seemed to care now that we weren't all hanging out talking standing in front of each other we were right. sitting in a in a pretty big circle okay but like um but like uh someone's partner uh uh i just went by myself by the way someone's partner forgot to le- like forgot and shook someone else's hand and i was just oh, looking no. and i was just like yeah. and then like they had like snacks out and w- one of my coworkers was just like putting his hand yep. in and yep. I was like, and I was like, what well, happens? I'm done on those snacks. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's and that's, it's just like this is this is how it happens. Right. Well, I think it's it's made people hyper aware, which I think is a good thing in a lot of ways. Yeah, I was just like looking. I was but, just like, but you also you gotta <laughs> you gotta find a balance with it too. You know. And that's the thing is like when 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 do I? Yeah, there was a some sort of little gnat or something on your yeah, face. I saw good. that. At what point do we return to quote unquote normal? At what point are we allowed to see people again? And are we going to have to take these quote unquote what risks to see right. the people that I love? Well, I think there's always a calculated risk, um, and there always has been. The difference is now is people are very afraid of this virus. Yeah, right. It's become the forefront of the media of. And, and look, I'm not saying it shouldn't be taken seriously because it definitely is very serious and it should be. I mean, I lost my job. My life was uprooted. Mm. And here I sit before you, Jared. Um, Strug- struggling to find a, a new job. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I mean, most people's jobs who are, are traveling, they're, they're just not going to, they might not be able to for the next few months. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's so many question marks. It's really crazy. Yeah, that's true. I, I, um, I told you... We were planning on recording a pod that day, and I, I really, you know, in the calendar invite that they put on our on the calendar, they said 4.30 to 6. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right. But in my head, I think I knew that it wasn't going to be done at 6. But I thought, I, this also goes to my struggle in saying no. I didn't know how to leave. I had no idea how to leave until, like, like right. I, I was I was like, man, like, I, I don't know how to, I didn't know how to make the exit. Especially with people I work with, I, mm-hmm. like especially since I was. Um, That's when you say like, you I don't have, have prior engagement. You, you, you got, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I I gotta go uh, See, write poetry with my girlfriend. I don't, I don't other people them, like uh, like um, have kids and stuff, you know, right. so they can they can use their kids as excuses. And right. I was like, man. See, now I'm starting to understand the. Uh, Jared, you got to get a pet fish. <laughs> get a pet fish and be like, I got to go home Dude. and take care of my pet fish. I'm really sorry. That's hilarious. He requires a lot of attention. <laughs> um, he's, a, he's a good fish. And uh, yeah. I, I don't hate that idea. Right. And I like, but then I'd have to turn into the fish person. I like, I have to talk about him. It's like, oh, uh, how was your day? And I like, the first thing I go to is like, well, Ollie was, uh, <laughs> right. was behind right. his rock for forever. I really had to coax him out with some of his favorite fish food. And they're like, oh my God, this guy I was like, all right, let's not bring him to the but, next to get together. <laughs> but see, is that what you want? If that's what you want. Yeah. Then... But I also don't want them to think I'm uh, insane, you know? Right. True. We're all a little insane in some that's way or true. another, though, Jared. That's true. Maybe it's think just, about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'd yeah. rather they find out this way than another way. Right. No, um, but, yeah, so that was... that was. Um, but, you know, I've. what's interesting about all this, though, Jared, is uh, I saw this article about um, the idea of this new normal, right? But the other idea of uh, maybe we can come out better, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, Hopefully it will, you know, that... When we look back at this year in history, hopefully yeah. by 2021, hopefully things are doing better. People are doing better. Honestly, hopefully by 2020, hopefully by now. I think it's so hard to for me to, well, yeah, for sure. Be- yeah, because, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, fear of, uh, you know, COVID right now. But that's only, now that's now that's sort of, be- oh, no, this is so sad to watch. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh Chad's dog is trying to come outside and hang with us, but uh, she can't. Uh, but that's almost like now, co- like people, have, it's like like COVID's background now to the uh, you know to the civil unrest that's happening and to all mm-hmm. the protest and rioting that uh, like is still happening. And I think it, when I look at it, um, and people say like, oh, keep talking about how this is history and we're making history right now, it, it's hard for me to even like understand that like to even fully grasp like what i'm witnessing is something that because we're living in this hasn't happened since like 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 we don't like 
these riots are still happening. These protests are still happening. I have, like, I guess it's, I've never put into perspective, like, I've, I guess I've never seen, like, I guess of 27, in 27 years, I've never heard of a protest or riot happening this long. Eight days, nine days, right? Yeah. Isn't, and, isn't and today, like, day nine? Yeah, the military be, being brought in. It's like all these things that are happening. Uh, and, and um, you know, dude, uh, it, it, <sighs> All right. It almost blows my mind to still see like like this, this when you see things like like now that this has happened on social media in in small bursts um for for a good amount of time, it's so crazy to see the same conversations happening. Where it's like, how are people still for one explaining like what all lives matter means? For example, right. it's like, it was like why why are people even bothering to have these conversations anymore? It should be it should be an ir- irrelevant discussion like, at this point. It's like. Yeah. I, it, oh my God. I, I don't even understand why. When I so even when I when I still see people like I'm like these people have to be just like doing this just for fun. Like saying like especially on social media, and I think like um, oh man, I need to really separate from social media, but it's so hard. Right. It's yeah. so hard. Yeah. Every everyone uses it nowadays. Yeah. I mean, everybody in in some way or fashion, it's hard. It's hard to live without it. Unless you don't have a smartphone, I feel like, or and now you almost feel, or at least I almost feel guilty if I like if I'm not informed or if I'm not and it's beyond, like if I'm not like l- seeing what's happening. Where it's like I kind of have to know what's happening. Right. Like I watched a uh, a speech of like a that uh, that the president put on. I never I've never seen longer than like a ten second to ten to thirty second clip of him speak. I don't think since he's been president. Uh, and I was like, I feel like I gotta watch this guy. Oh no, I've actually seen, I've seen the State of Unions. I watch those, but um, but now like now I feel like I gotta make a point to watch this guy's freaking live stream where there's tear gas going off in the background. Did you yeah. see that? That was crazy. It's unreal. It's just unreal too. Just the state of what's happening right now. You know, just like I I read somewhere that there was a thread going back to social media, a thread about people would start listing off all of the different police brutality things. Mm-hmm. And in one day, it was over 200. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. I never watched police brutality videos either. Until right. now, I've seen a bunch of them now, and I hate I, it. Honestly, I they never, make me I, angry, I make a point. man. Yeah, of course. They make me like of physically course. like want to... Well, I, po- I kind of make a point usually like when it's like one, or like one every six months, I make a point not to watch it. Right, but now it's like I can't, you can't avoid it, and you feel, and mm-hmm. like and, and it's just like yeah, I've, it's yeah. everywhere on American social media. At least. Yeah, I can't comment for other countries, but definitely I'm in the sure, states. I'm sure, I'm sure they're because that's the thing. See, once again, now we're talking about like this is history. Mm-hmm. I think everyone is is seeing this, and I, I've I've actually seen um, so like uh, some conversations on Twitter and stuff, and they're like, I wonder what they're saying about like how like there's how much they're talking about this in other places, and they say that. Like this and COVID are are kind of the top things, and you know a lot of the right. you know major countries around the world. Oh, definitely, yeah, um, yeah. And there are protests. I saw there were protests in Berlin. I saw all protests over the place. In Amsterdam. Paris, Berlin. Well, you know, Europeans love to protest, which That's is great. True. I don't. I'm not. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, like the more people, the better. But it is kind of a joke that, especially French people. There, I saw so many jokes about. Like French people would be like, I can't, I don't remember them exactly, but just being like, yeah, I'll protest, sure, yeah, cool. <laughs> we <laughs> right. protesting, <laughs> right? I mean, well, when you have, you know, free speech in theory, you can go do that. And right? they have a lot. I mean, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of huge racial issues in France too. Yeah, oh yeah, especially with, um, I mean, obviously with black people as well, and but right. um, you know, I a just, lot with uh, Muslim people too. I there. just don't understand though, Jared, why the statement Black Lives Matter is controversial to people. Because look, the statement is not Black Lives Matter more than others or other lives matter less. It just means Black Lives Matter. Everyone's life matters. And right now, black lives are being lost for all sorts of reasons, especially by due to police brutality. You see a pattern over years and years and years. Yeah. And... um, I don't see why that's a controversial well, and then that, statement. And then that's the irony of the Blue Lives Matter thing, which is literally right. just just like a backlash. <laughs> like, no. Um, which the irony of that is, or it's like, I've seen all these stupid memes and stuff where they're like, no, teachers matter. And they're like, yeah, but you're not at risk every day. And it's like, 
That's uh, not how true. Do you not see, well, School but, shootings? Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, theoretically, they shouldn't be, their life shouldn't be at risk every day. Right. But it's like no they don't even see the whole, the, the irony behind their own, the, them using Blue Lives Matter. Right. Well, and the difference. Or it's like between, you're saying your job is more dangerous than uh, the plumber. Or, right. Which, sure, yeah, it is. But it's In like. In some regards, sure. But that, but it's just like you're only saying that that's only just a backlash to. Right. I don't know. It's just. Right. And well, it's not dangerous. It's only more dangerous because you make it more well, dangerous the, for yourself. And the other probably. difference, too, with Blue Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter is. Uh, if you're a police officer, that's an occupation you choose. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to be a career police officer, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But hopefully, you're uh, doing it for good. Um, I feel so bad watching <laughs> watching my my poor dog. She just wants to come join us on the deck, but we're we're leaving her inside. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy though, Jared. Just to think that people aren't understanding what's going on all of the you know systemic racism that yeah. we see in everything um, and and i feel like and people and, pe- and and like these these hardcore america like americans and don't disrespect america things where it's like mm-hmm. this is one of the protesting is one of the pillars that america is built on right you should be able to voice That's your up opinion there with freely the second and amendment. openly you, yep <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> Or it's like, how, like you, you like it's, it's so funny that you pick and choose which amendments you stand by so right. hard, and then you just mm-hmm. disregard people's ability to do the other. And it's like, no, you can't do it this way, but you can do it that way, but you can do it that way. Where it's like, well, if you're telling us or us, yeah, I'll say us, sure. If you're telling yeah. us how to do it, then they're not doing it. That's mm-hmm. not a protest if you tell us what to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah, it's like, how is that not. a protesting? Yeah, it's really crazy. Speaking of speaking of which, though, Jared, I want to I want to talk to you about oh, not yet, oh, not okay, yet, okay, not okay. yet. We will spread some love in a bit. Uh, uh, I have a good one today, an interesting one today, actually. Um, but I want to talk to you about this before we get onto that. Um, I don't know if you're in a rush today, but uh, I got. It's so nice seeing you again, being That's back. That's why in I want person. to come over yeah. early too. Yeah, smart, smart call, Jared. Anyways, uh, NFL condemns racism. At, uh, sorry, I'm laughing at this. Let me just read it. Sorry. <laughs> NFL it. condemns racism and admits we were wrong not to listen to NFL player protests. And and look, I think it's good that they are now admitting that they were wrong. That is good. But it's a little late, don't you think? I mean, well, sure. Sure. Of course it's a little late. But it's the NFL's a business, and they ma- they're making a business move. And it's so pathetic right. watching Roger Goodell sit there. And de- and, and then also, yeah. also not even reference once Kaepernick. Right. It's ridiculous. Or it's like it's so funny that um you could like you could have been on the right side of this long uh, ago. What was long, that, six long years ago. ago or whatever that was? I think four, but still. Yeah, you could have been on the right <laughs> Yeah. You could have been on the right side of this so long ago and now it's like, oh and and then and so now it's like but I mean they paid him, I guess, but still. It it's it it is laughable. And and right. I guess I guess they he he has to do it in a weird way. I think a lot of business, especially for do. his job, not right. for his job, but for his, uh, for like the business that he's in, where it's like, at some point you have to realize what you're, um, it's like, if you don't say anything now, you're going to lose a lot of people and it's going to, you're going to make an even bigger statement when people are going right. to be shitting on you more next season. Oh, for sure. Or uh, ignoring these people even more. And so it's just a business move to me when I see it. Right. And I, it's, I, I don't feel sorry for him, but it's kind of pathetic to me. I'm not Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with you. And I think Especially since he didn't go full force and, and even mention Kaepernick. Right. Who, started, who kind of started this for the NFL. Exactly. Uh, but what's also important to keep in mind, um, oh, I forget the gentleman's name, but he's the uh, uh, Atlanta Hawks uh, basketball coach. And, and he was saying that, you know, the kneeling and the protesting is incredibly important. 100%. But what's also just as important is the action that's taken afterwards. So right. the NFL can say we were wrong, you know, we shouldn't mm-hmm. have done that, but if they don't do what are you anything, do about it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Put, like, your, put money your money where your, where your mouth, mouth is. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we've exactly. seen we've seen that. We've I've seen a lot of companies um like commit to donating uh, like Michael Jordan, him mm-hmm. or Jordan, the company. I mean, he's part, um, you know, part of it, but there's obviously right. more than just him. But uh, their, their company, I think, committed a hundred million over the next ten years to fighting right. uh, racial injustice. But and, see, how how do you do that, and what does that look like? I think it's great they're doing it. Yeah, I'm not trying to, to discredit like, it. Yeah, but yeah. Like, well, first, I think you have to start with you say that, but then you like if, if it's going to be a hundred million over the next ten or a hundred million over the next ten years, you say that that's great. Then you give us at least a plan for that. Like you say, and and 
right now we're donating 10 million split over to these different organizations right. so it's like say that and then do it immediately like then start immediately right with you know the first 10 million of the over the next 10 years exactly can you imagine though jared like in a decade from now if and how much respect would they garner too right by doing that right can you imagine though in a decade from now if they did it right if companies do this right and really do put their money where their mouth is what kind of world we might be able to live in yeah I mean, if we had funding for arts, for music... There's an oh. air raid siren. I forgot that that happens. Yep. Yep. I wonder how much of it it's picking up. Here, let me... It's probably <laughs> picking it up for sure. <laughs> it's almost definitely picking it up. But this is, they do this... This is not because the world's going to shit. This, they do, like, these tests um, yeah, this is every, a test. every Saturday. Is this, is this an air raid? Are you sure that's what it is? I thought it was... I don't know if it's an air raid, but it's a test of that system where they... <laughs> Really, what it sounds like is aliens are coming to get us. I mean, could be. This. So, okay, let's pause this for a second. See if they can. If you can hear. In your mic, in your Turn up your. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jared. Well, I think uh, you know it's time to. Spread a little love. That's right. We got cut off by the air raid siren, but. Um, yep. But we're we back. We're safe. We we're won't alive. let the aliens stop this podcast. That's right. That's right. I think. I think we could get some alien guests on. I think they would be. Midnight Gospel. Yeah. Great show. I watched oh, an episode I'm yesterday. Gl- I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I think still, I recommended still, it to you, I haven't didn't finished I? it. I, I'd heard about it, but it wasn't a priority for me. Right. I'm like, oh, I should check that out. But when you said that, I was like, all right, I will. No, I'll actually go do it. Dude, I binged the Avatar for like two weeks. We've talked about this. Remember, I've never been an, I've never been an Avatar person. Oh, man. You, I don't know how I avoided it because I'm you, a hardcore Nickelodeon right, person. Right. I think I'm because I, I'm kind of I'm kind of get turned off by anime, I think. Mm. And I think I just never really gave it a time of the, the time of day. Mm. You should try it. It's a, there's a lot of, lot of good never, lessons in the show. Because I never gave Dragon Ball Z the, the proper time of day Oof. either. I watched it because my friends okay. that loved it and stuff, but okay. I was never really into it, into it. I don't know it well. I see. Means. I was pretty into, into DBC as well. Yeah. DBZ and F. I, 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 now I regret it, though. I wish right. I did know it more. Uh, right. Anyway, where were Well, it's right? on Netflix. Anyways, my first shotgun today know. goes out to- Dragon Ball Z's on Netflix? No, no, no. Oh, Avatar. Midnight, Go- Avatar. Oh, Avatar. And, right, and right, Midnight right. Gospel, which is what started all this. But Bring anyways. So yeah, we're going to spread some love and- uh, I want to give a shout out to Mongolia, okay. Jared, because Mongolia has provided the U.S. with one million dollars aid to fight the COVID nineteen pandemic. Now, wow! Last Wait. last I checked, I'll double check again. Why, why is this? They just want to help. We are one of uh, we have really good diplomatic relations with Mongolia. Um, I did not know that. I personally love Mongolia. Um, <laughs> no, how much? Do, how much of that million goes to you? Uh, uh, half of it. <laughs> half of it. Five hundred thousand. Um, but yeah. So let me let me see here. But last I checked, they had really really low numbers in Mongolia of COVID nineteen mm. cases. Uh, yeah. Okay. Take a guess, Jared. How many they've had? Now, Confirmed. Okay. Now they could have really low testing. I don't know yeah, how good say. their health infrastructure is. I was is. about to say. But But just, I'm not trying to shit on Mongolia because right. I too love Mongolia. Right. Vicariously through me, right? Um, and through the Mongolian throat singing what, music like, we listen to on the pod, right? 193 confirmed cases, okay. 71 recovered and zero deaths. Wow. So they had a huge so, spike in May. I guess one thing we can't uh, spike what? To what? Uh, that's to 193. Uh, to 60, 60 recorded <laughs> okay. cases in May. So I think one thing, 56, we, one sorry, thing we can, mm-hmm. one thing that does make me very curious is there's clearly, uh, not clearly, listen, not clearly. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's not a big enough sample size to just, dis- also I'm not a doctor. Right. But Wait, I wonder not, if there, we've uh, done some medical episodes where Dr. Jared came for, the, oh, that was a different Jared we hired. <laughs> yeah, for the, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, sorry, continue. <laughs> there is a, uh, there is a, um, like there is something to, said, to be said for the no death part because that does make me imagine that what about like what like one they're healthy I imagine mm-hmm. generally healthier and what is it about their health specifically right that's really um, yeah right also one million dollars I mean you know it's well, very nice well for a country I'm not sure what Mongolia's GDP is but um, anyways I think it's a great gesture uh, and I hope they use the million dollars for something good. You know, I hope it's not yeah. wasted. Um, but Mongolia Fueling has also... Air Force One, that's probably what right. Trump's going to use it but for. But Mongolia has also donated to some other countries, Jared, as well. They've uh, also donated money to uh, Russia and China as well, I believe. You know, how did I, how did I see that? How did I f- feel that that was coming? Yep. Um, <laughs> ah. So, yeah, Mongolia has pledged uh, hmm. to give meat uh, to Russia and a donation of 30,000 sheep to China. 
Um, but you know what, Jared? Even even though this isn't a huge donation in comparison to other donations, I think it's still worth applauding um, that they're doing this. Yeah, um, for sure. To help those different. I mean, I, I mean, there is something to be said for. Um, it, it's not even about the money, obviously. Right. It's about the gesture. Mm-hmm. But there is something to be said for that. That we're in an interesting company there, the United States. Right. Right. But I, I think uh, it makes sense in a way that the U.S. and Mongolia have good ties just because uh, Mongolia, from my understanding, they do have a, uh, a democratic government. Um, and in, in that area, they are one of the few countries that does have a democratic government, um, okay. you know, and stuff like that. And uh, I do think Mongolian people, the way they live is probably healthier than most Americans for sure. I didn't see any obese people while I was in Ulaanbaatar. Um, so, yeah, can't can't say that about the U.S., unfortunately. Well, shout out to... Um, Mongolia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Jared, thanks for I the, think... Uh, uh, thanks for the dough. That's right. I we'll think, spend it wisely. That's right. I think you know what time it is, Jared. Oh, I do. I do. I'm just... Uh, so, for our listeners out there that are new to the podcast... It's time for some untranslatables, which are idioms, phrases, axioms, um, proverbs that are not easily translated into English on a one-to-one basis. Sure. Uh, and I'm going to get us started today, Jared. I'm going to start us off with a uh, Spanish phrase um, from Mexico, and it is, ¿Qué onda? And it means, what wave? Oh, it's, is, it like, is it like a cool way of saying, like, like how you living, brother? That's right. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, okay. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> I just I just imagine someone would be like, "What's the wave?" Right. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good one. That might have to be the new untranslatable. What's the wave? <laughs> oh my god! I'm so glad we're on two separate tracks because I totally just uh, <laughs> <laughs> laughed over that. But that was amazing, and I'm gonna use that for something. You better. Um, What's the wave? Uh, and I can just imagine like two seventy soul brothers doing right. that high five. They're like, <laughs> right? <laughs> we got to do the do the Corona one, the safe one, the distance oh, yeah. high five. Yeah, we'll have to make one up later, for sure. Yeah. Um, my first one is Icelandic. I got into a real cold country kick. Nice. Um, so my first one's Icelandic, and it's Razgat Ibala. I don't really know how to say that. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um. A butt in the tub. A butt in the tub. Hmm. You got your butt in the tub, boy. I, 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 hmm. <laughs> now, I could. that does sound like something some of my family would say. Boy, you got your butt in the tub. Can you give me an example? Um, hmm. Let's, 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 so, you were telling me about your uh, lovely basset hound pl- uh, playing in the backyard. Mm-hmm. And you saw, you uh, you saw it in the bushes, and you thought it was uh, just a butt in the tub. But then you ran out there, and um, turned out to be like look like more some, serious, yeah. huh? So it's so it's like when something's not a big deal. Um. Well, think think about it from your dog's point. Of, well, okay, okay. Think about it from your dog's Having point fun? of view. Maybe think about if 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 your dog had gone in there. And they're, it means that there's nothing at all, but it's like when you like, like you're expecting something, mm. but it's like, then it's like, oh, but there's, but uh, there's nothing ah, at all. I there's see. just a butt in the tub. That's all. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I like that one. That's so good. I was trying to make it seem like, like your, like your dog was just frolicking through the, uh, the flowers and the, but, like but there was, was just nothing, a button, right. the t- like thinking there was something, but there was just right. a butt in the tub. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Nice. My next one for you is also Mexican Spanish and it is. Tienes feria. Tienes is to have. Do you have? Uh-huh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, right. Do you have? Because that, mm-hmm. that um, conjugation means right. you. Mm-hmm. Do you have? What was the last word? Feria. Feria. Tienes feria? Is that like a ferry, a boat? Uh, do you have uh, county fair? Do you have county fair? Is that like bus fair or something? Uh, county well, fair. You're getting close. If you, you need, get, if you need bus fare, what do you need? Oh, do you have like some change? Yeah. Do you have money? Some money? Okay. You, yeah, okay. You got okay. some money? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got them dollar dollar bills? Yeah. Let me hold a dollar. <laughs> that was like, what's that? Oh, hey, little dude from across the street. That was from Everybody Hates Chris. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
Um, my next one is, oh, shoot. I meant to look up what this language actually was. Uh, what language do they speak in Greenland? Uh, is it, ooh, is it green? I don't know. I don't know either. Well, no, I, I looked up Wales. the, I found a list, a, a great list of, mm-hmm. of, uh, you really are labels. on these cold, cold island I kicks. Got, I like uh, it. I don't have any, um, I don't have any Wi Fi on my computer out here. Oh, uh oh. So I, I can't look up what language they speak in, in Greenland. Here, I can look it up for you. Green. Okay, well, while you're looking that up, I'll give you the untranslatable. And what I wrote on my notes Greenland language. Uh, Palasip. Tungana. Only Green, near Greenlandic. Greenlandic. That's what it says. Greenlandic language is roughly divided into four dialects. Well, that's probably because it, it, South that's Greenlandic, pro- West Greenlandic. I'm sure that's mm-hmm. not how you say it in Greenlandic. Like I'm sure it's some word we. The main vi- Yeah, you're right. Uh, the main <laughs> variety, Kalalilisut or West Greenlandic, has been the official language of the Greenlandic Autonomous Territory since June 2009. A move by the Nalakar Suisit government of Greenland to strengthen the language in its com- competition with the colonial language of Danish. Mm, the Danish col- colonized Greenland. Interesting. I wonder if Greenland would be a worthwhile place to go... Um, well, like see, that's the funny to. thing is Iceland is the green place and Greenland is the icier place. But Iceland's cold too. Like, well, yeah, like people say that, cold. but they're both cold. They're both cold. I used to think mm-hmm. I, I used to think Iceland, like when people used to say that, I imagined Iceland looked like Scotland or something, like the right. hills of Scotland, mm-hmm. which I, I, it kind of does. I guess is hilly, but mm-hmm. it still is like a you know very cold place to be. Oh, definitely. Um, but yeah, so Greenland, yeah, it's probably not a place you can just visit like easily. Oh, okay. Anyway, Palasip Fungana. Which means? Only near the reverend or priest, depending on who you prefer. So it's like uh, to be on your best behavior. <laughs> no. No. Okay. So I'll give you a, um, I'll give you a, a hint. When, um, I, I, when I, I'm, not a gra- I'm not great at, at cleaning, but if I know I'm having a guest over... Um, I'm great at, at, as I call it, getting hitting the glamour muscles. That's what I call so it. So making it look presentable? Uh, yes. Okay. But that's not really what the, um, that's not really what it is. So um, only near the reverend, or essentially, you, yes, when someone doesn't clean properly. Oh, when it's dirty or messy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I gotcha. And All so right. it's like it's like you only have it cleaned up, so like you sweep every, any, everything under the rug, so when the priest stops by, it looks clean. Right. Uh, but really, you didn't clean. You didn't clean the place. Okay, that makes sense. That's what I call it. I say I just hit the glamour muscles. I, I sweep the floor. I I put stuff on the shelf, but mm-hmm. don't go into that room. Throw everything in the closet <laughs> yeah. under the bed. <laughs> exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Put a sheet over your clothes chair <laughs> with all the clothes on them. Right. Well, I got one more for you today, Jared, and this one is uh, Brazilian Portu- Portuguese, uh, and this is a good one. I like this one. A sombra de bananeira. Which means under the shade of a banana tree. Mm. Is it like? It's like oh, it's easy for you. To, is it like? Is it, I when I hear that, I imagine someone on social media mm-hmm. like saying, "Hey, Mike Tyson, your punches look weak. I could take you." And it's like, yeah, it's easy to say that under the shade of your banana tree. Uh, that's an interesting guess, but no. Uh, okay. Let me let me try to help you out here. Um, you know, Jared, we're doing this socially distanced podcast. And uh, I got to say, I feel pretty comfortable. I feel like I'm just, you know, sitting in the shade of a banana tree. Oh, you're just relaxing. No worries. No worries. No worries. Oh, I got No you. worries, brother man. No worries. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Actually, I think that's that okay sign in some countries is a, is a bad one to use, I think. The, well, Speaking of no oh, worries. Really? I think so, yeah. Oh, like the three finger, yeah, like the three A-OK finger, kind yeah. of thing? Well, it also is the... It, you know, it's interesting. It's also, it's the... The white power symbol, But it's too, also right? a symbol for a black fraternity. Like is that's it really? Their, I believe it's the Q's is the, is the black fraternity. You, okay. I'm, not at, I'm not looking for right. you. I'm sure you don't know. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but I know that right. is the symbol for a black fraternity. I just, I, I just don't know them well. I believe it's the Q's, and it's the same as the white supremacy symbol. Granted, these are two very different groups that would be using these symbols, so I don't right. think... I think it's easy not to get them confused. Um... All right. Speaking of, yeah. Speaking of using the wrong symbols in certain countries, where are some customs that uh, you would that would be found offensive? 
Overseas, yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk today about American customs that are offensive overseas. And I think a, a really big one, Jared, um, for a lot of, especially Asian cultures, is um, going inside with your shoes on. Oh, I think that's a yeah. big no no. I think yeah. I think in a lot of places, depending on where you live in America, mm-hmm. some people do wear shoes. Some people have hardwood floor houses and uh and I would wear slippers, not shoes, but I understand yeah. why they wear shoes. You know, some people have a, a designated set of indoor shoes. I think you do, right? Uh yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't like walking around barefoot. My feet get cold. <clears throat> Like, even when it's sort of warm out, like, my feet get kind of cold. Mm-hmm. And so I don't like walking around barefoot. And um, I don't understand those people that just walk around in socks. I, I would have right. no socks ever. Mm. They would just all have holes. How do people not get holes in their socks? Really? I don't get holes in mine. Oh. Man, I like to slide You're a fast a walker. I, oh, that's why. <laughs> I, I the, conduct a lot of energy. Doing the Tom Cruise slide. I, am try- I, I feel like an old person right now. I'm trying to turn on my um, mobile hotspot. Mm. But uh, I don't know how to do it. I mean, I can go get you the Wi-Fi password if you want. Um, yeah, but we don't. It's, I guess it's not that big of a deal. No. All right. I have a whole list of customs that uh, just just to jog my my brain on U.S. customs. Right. Um, but uh, you know, who cares? Whatever. We are you sure I can? Uh, no, it's okay. It's All okay. Right. Okay. Um, um, no, but yeah, so, shoes. But I think the other thing is a lot of cultures where they don't. Where they expect you to take off your shoes, they generally have slippers or something for you to wear. Do they really? A lot of I've at been, least in well, Asia, a lot of places. Oh, in Asia, yeah, maybe. I've places. never been to Asia. Mm-hmm. I've been to plenty of places where they uh, ask me to take off my shoes, which mm-hmm. is fine. Right. But uh, they definitely aren't offering me um, offering me like uh, some wabaki. Where is it? Are those slippers? Yeah, you've never seen. No, um, interesting. Oh, it's from uh, it's from Too Fast, Too Furious. Okay. Oh no, excuse me. It's from Tokyo Drift. When they, when he was in, have you seen Tokyo Drift? I've never Drift? seen Tokyo Drift. Oh, when he was in, uh, they, well, he goes to Japan. Like okay. he, this American guy moves to Japan, and uh, he has to wear his wabaki, which are his indoor slippers, uh, mm. at a school. Right. And the yeah. teacher doesn't speak English. They, did, they wabaki, did that in the Czech Republic as well. Like, I don't. I don't. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I had a pair of shoes that were my work shoes that I left in the office. Actually. So so, at what point did you change? Your shoes as soon as you walked in? No, so no, my shoes were in, in the teacher's office. So I would walk up um, from outside to the teacher's office and then put on the shoes that I would use to teach in. Um, but the, the students all had uh, the students all had their own uh, slippers or Crocs. A lot of them had like knockoff Crocs in the Czech Republic. I, I have knockoff uh, Birkenstocks from right. Walmart. <laughs> We call them walling stocks. Cause nice, <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, walling stocks. But I, you know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad practice in a lot of ways, just because I do think it's more sanitary, more hygienic. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If, if you can, of course. You know? And and I will tell you, Jared, at my apartment in China and the Czech Republic, I had I had slippers uh, for people. Um. So oh, so how does that work? Like if people visited? Yeah, if people come over, I had two pairs of just slippers for guests. Well, would it would it would people look at you funny if you walked around uh, with normal shoes on, like outdoor shoes? Probably in the Czech Republic. Oh, really? Oh, okay, so it's 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 pretty deep into the uh, culture. I think so. Yeah. Um, what, so how was. far does this go? Would you if you were to go into like a say you worked at a at Škoda mm-hmm. and you and you just you know which had is a, a cubic- Czech car company for yeah. people that don't know. Oh yeah, excuse me. And you just had like a normal cubicle job mm-hmm. like any other person. Uh, w- would they do it there, or would they know. probably? That's a good they, question. I, I bet you they have dress shoes on. Probably, probably. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure, but because th- where's the line there? I wonder. Right, it's hard to say, but I I think it's safe to say for most people who travel, if you are visiting, say you go to Japan or Korea or China or somewhere, and they invite you over for a family dinner, I would definitely uh, recommend taking your shoes off. Um, yes, and, and sometimes too you might, and they might tell you not to. I generally still do. Um, I mean, uh, you know, you know to. Uh, you know, now that I think I, I actually remember when I lived in Germany. Um, mm-hmm. Now, to be the, the only reason I didn't really get offered, well, actually, I probably did. Actually, I take that back. But you know, my friends weren't offering me slippers, right? But um, there definitely was, um, definitely was uh, a shoes off. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I don't know why I'm so nervous about getting holes in my socks now. But I'm, I feel like I'm very prone to holes in my mm. socks. You're just sliding too much, Jared. What can I say? Do you just never? You have, you can you can go through a pair of socks for its entire lifetime and never get holes in it. I mean, no, it'll take a couple of years. Uh, okay, okay, it'll okay. take a couple of years. Because I have some socks that are come that are like very close to it, and mm-hmm. I'm like, is this me? Or else also, I guess socks they run out. Right. Give me another one. 
I just think Americans uh, tend to be pretty loud. I would say a lot of Americans mm. are very loud and proud, which to some extent isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, there's a time and a place for everything. I don't. I don't think we're putting a value ju- judgment on the custom. I think it's more on how other people take it. Because mm. obviously there's nothing wrong with being loud, especially if everyone else is. And we're not the only loud culture person. Definitely not. But we're also, uh, but they're also, like, that's definitely an adjustment in Germany because they will, they'll look at you funny if you oh, feel sure. loud on the subway or something. Right. Um, and, they, and they have no problem, not they, some of them have no problem being like, hey, could you keep it down? I've seen that happen before. Right. It's happened to right. me Which I think in Austria. Is, right. Oh, really? Yeah, Was me, that and, with you? me and Nolan on the subway. What did they say to you? It wasn't even, you know, the funny thing is, I don't even think it was an Austrian person based off of her okay. accent. She sounded American. Hmm. Well, maybe um, that's why she told you. Yeah, she was embarrassed. Could be. Maybe. I didn't think we were that loud. I, I do you. think, though, American tourists uh, do get a bad reputation, and some of it is probably yeah. for fair reason. You know what bad reputation we don't get? What? Is paying, spending money. Ooh, that's tipping. true. Tipping, they don't we find do that gotta be careful. Do they? Well, maybe they do. They actually. do. Some people do. They do. That's true. There are a lot of cultures. I mean, in China, there was a, a lot of times where I didn't tip. Um, you know, even you try to... That's the interesting thing about Chinese culture is Chinese people will literally pay you back if they owe you one or two cents. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's crazy. You know, if if you owed me two, two cents, I'd be like, don't worry about it, man. Like... Yeah, it's, well, it's I don't. Two cents. I, yeah, sure. yeah, it's two cents. But they, I think there's just something different about their culture and how they value. Yeah, it's not about the money. I mean, right? Yeah, right. It's not. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing is it's not about the money, but it's. I think it's also a sign of. You also have to put yourself in their shoes. You know, you're a you're a foreign tourist visiting mm-hmm. their country. Um, yeah, yeah. If they want to give you back right. those two cents, don't insist on them keeping it. Don't say like, "Don't right. worry about it, man." Right. No, no. It's like, it's like now, now, now it's starting. Now it could probably potentially cross over to offensive. It's right. like it's you know just take it. Well, I think in Mongolia too, when we went out to restaurants, I don't think we gave a tip, and I'm pretty sure we but asked about it, and they told us they not also, to. at least a lot of these cultures also. Um, are set are set up in a way where they're not reliant on a on a tip. Right, our, it's a different our system. Employees yeah. are reliant on it too, which is live. too bad. It's really too bad because if we and I think this whole pandemic has shown a lot of flaws in our systems. Sure, you know, and and the fact that they survive so many waitresses and servers survive on tips. Um, it's it's really important that we. That you know they can make a more livable wage, yeah, without just tips. Um, yeah, and, and you think about that mm-hmm. now. I've been thinking about that recently, where I have been thinking that oh, I'm sure like, I'm sure some well, wait staff has lost their job. Of course, restaurants yeah. are closing, but then mm-hmm. all, I'm sure uh, some have also been repurposed to work, um, like with uh, carry out and all that stuff, and to maybe facilitate that. I mean, obviously you need less people, right? But um. How does he, but but then the like it has to change the whole sort of tip game because that tip that you're giving is for it's not for the restaurant that tip you're giving is to the person delivering it to you correct but there's but but we're still in a society where like I, I imagine we just have to hope the company will will cover them and what pay them minimum wage which right. is still which is still not, not livable a great living. yeah it's yeah. not livable actually I was watching an episode of American Dad yesterday. Where uh, Stan, the, the American dad, the you know main yeah. character, he uh, had a bet with his daughter that he could live on minimum wage. Oh, I remember and that. And he episode. couldn't. Yeah. And it's <laughs> the sad thing is, although it's supposed to be funny, it's pretty true. Yeah. You really, you really can't. Um, yeah. You really can't. Um, yeah. And what's interesting too regarding deliveries and stuff, I think a lot of other countries. When I was in Indonesia, when I was in China, uh, you know, I didn't ever pay for. Like there was a delivery fee, but there there wasn't even an option to give a tip. Mm-hmm. And I guess I I probably could have given them a cash tip, but I never tried because I had been told by other people not to give tips. Yep. You know, so it's 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 just interesting how how that works because I think me as an American, if I was a delivery driver, I probably would take a tip. Yeah, I'd be okay with it. You know. Yeah, but, me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You know what one that um. Oh no, I forgot it. I just had one in my head and I forgot it. Uh, so you can give me another one. I'll, it'll come back to me. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked about um, shoes. Oh, I thought you had a list in front of you. I, I mean, well, I do. Oh, I was oh, just trying oh, to go oh. off the top of the dome. Um, um, there, I literally just had one and I just forgot it. Um, right. Because you know, Jared, today we're just under the shade of a banana tree. We're chilling yeah, today, Jared. Sure. So, uh, sure. I was, oh, here we go. Um, so, uh, let's well, I I think there's a. Um, I got another one for you though. 
Okay. Well, one that the one that um, well, one that we we in the the black community have always joked about mm-hmm. as um when we were you know has always been a joke, um is how parents are treated. Oh, for sure. Um, for sure. Because um, because even I, I think even like in a lot of the Asian cultures that we've already talked about, there's mm-hmm. um there's just a general age respect thing. Way more than here. In, in general. Way more than here. Definitely. And um, and that's really, and, and I think that's going to shit, going to shit like, I sound like some old person. I demand respect from these children. Dude, we're almost 30. Um, we're I think that's going old. away in he, here and in a lot of European uh, cultures too. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. Uh, but I think the other thing that's interesting about the cultural differences between uh, viewing our elders and our parents is I think in the States at least we... We send our parents into nursing homes a lot of times because we feel they can be provided with better care, better service. You know, yeah. you work full time. If one of your parents needed you to take care of them. And or then the home, irony is they have to work full time to afford to even have them in that place. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, whereas, you know, in Asian culture, a lot of times they take care of their families until they have to go to the hospital. And, I, and, I, th- and I think once you get to that age... You know, a lot of these Asian cultures, like uh, Japan, Korea, they ha- they live old- a lot older than mm-hmm. us here in the U.S. And, right. and many European countries. I think a lot of that too is once you get to a certain age, like it's 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 weirdly like a I don't I don't know even know how to say this. It's like it's it's not even really like physical versus like a big part of it is more mental than physical at, at a certain point where it's like your body's kind of going to do what it's going to do at at a certain point. It's like right. And obviously, you can do things to help that, but I think so much at that age is is the mental part of it. And I think your uh, one's mentality. Yeah, my allergies are starting to act up. Yep. One's men, one's like mental health is, is improved like tenfold by living with their family rather than mm-hmm. um, now. That don't let my parents hear this because I'm right. not. This is I, I can't. No promises. Well, I think it also depends on the family too. Sure. Um, no, I'm just most kidding. Definitely. But one custom I think that we have here in the states, Jared, that a lot of countries don't understand, is our use of air conditioning. Yeah. I think I think a lot of people when they come, you know, I mentioned at the top of the show today that we would be talking about things so when Americans do travel again, they can be aware of. But I think this is also important for people coming to the States yes. when hopefully things get better. Um, because I do see some light at the end of the tunnel, Jared, I really hope. so. I make a um, point to you. I, I'm always turning off the AC. Like, like, I, right. I, like I only turn it on if, like, if I'm hot. If it's, I hate yeah. just having it on all day, so right. like, like, like consistently set at 69 or whatever. Right. I don't like that. Um, but yeah, I remember in, in, in Germany there, I don't want to say they're afraid of it, but, I mean, uh, but they're a little <laughs> afraid of it. I mean, in the Czech Republic, they also view it. I remember having many Czech people tell me, well, oh, well, that can't be good for your health. And they, maybe they're right, but I've never had any adverse health effects yet. Uh, and I've mm. lived in countries that had AC as a primary way to keep your house cool. I've been in places with no AC. What was the AC like in China? What, what, I mean, I had really good. I was lucky, man. I was in a very. I mean, nice, obviously, it's, it's very disparate because there's right. a big. Uh, there's a huge gap in yeah, China. Financial huge, huge divide. Gap. Um, I was lucky, man. I mean, I really. It was funny. I don't know if I've have we mentioned on the podcast that I got my stuff finally shipped, and I, we haven't talked about this, have we? No. Oh my gosh! So. Uh, so I've gotten my st- all my stuff in China has now been packed up by a moving company. I saw them. I had to stay up till two thirty in the morning to watch them go into my apartment, pack up my stuff. Well, how did how did you watch them? Was someone they, had, they like, called a me? Selfie what, stick? One, no, well, kind of. One of my colleagues called me. And we just did a, a WeChat video. Oh, yeah. so to make sure they didn't steal anything or something. No, I wasn't worried about oh, them yeah, they stealing don't steal. stuff. They don't steal there. It's not. Well, it can I, happen, but I, I think people stole my video games. <laughs> <laughs> it was PS3 games. Right. But I, for the life of me, I can't find my video. games games and i was right. like they, I, I, anyway you know, so no. your stuff's coming back well it'll take they said anywhere from eight to ten weeks oh uh, yeah still but, so it, it'll, but at least it'll you know it's coming you don't need yeah. it right uh the nice thing was though so it was four boxes so i had four boxes worth of stuff um and uh it took them about an hour and a half to pack everything up uh they did a great job packing it up like i saw them packing it up in the boxes they taped up all the boxes mm-hmm. um talked with uh the the worker through the moving company the moving company i went with was called sae 
Asia Moving Company, um, and they were really professional with handling everything. Um, so if anyone is also in a COVID predicament like I was, <laughs> because trust me, man, I know of people that still have their stuff sure. in their apartments you in China. You have to find this company? Um, yeah, I, I did it myself, yeah. Because is I had the only a few way options. Get, no, the, uh, no, 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 okay. I had a few options. The other option was wait for the embassy to open up. But they're still on administrative leave, and we are in pay June. For it? Yeah. Okay. I got, I got, well, so here's the other issue too, Jared. Well, that's a, that um, makes a big difference too. Then. I had to pay for it, but uh, I had to pay for a third of it. Um, uh, that's not bad. So, so some of it was covered. Uh, sorry, no, two thirds of it. Two thirds. Oh, they covered a third. Worse. So I'm going to guess, oh, that's so what, like a thousand? I paid about, I paid out of pocket 1700 Okay. To get my stuff I mean, in, in, like, if you think about it just mm-hmm. like logically, that's a great, that's a right. great price. But obviously, there's probably a way you could have gotten out of it with zero, but you'd have to right. wait a lot, lot well, longer. No, it's going by ship. It's going as slow as it can go. No, but I'm saying is, but the other way is, is there a way you could have done it where you didn't have to pay for it? Yes. Well, but and let me get to that. Oh, so, okay. so I had three options offered to me oh, yeah, by my sure. previous employer. Okay. So it was wait for the embassy to open up. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know when the embassy in China would open up in time to handle things. And, and they still are on administrative leave in June. We are in June now, Jared, and they're still on administrative leave. They had to create different email accounts because their email is a secure type of email where they can't access it outside of the premises of work. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, What's that about? Um, just for government security. It's, oh, it's oh I got you. Stuff. I got you. Um, so anyways. So, oh, I see. I, right. I got you. Right. And so anyways, um, so that was option one. Option two to get my stuff shipped back to me was have my colleagues in Jinan cover it and they would be reimbursed by GU, which I felt uncomfortable yeah. asking about that. Like, yeah, hey, can you front me up. almost three grand to have my stuff shipped back? And you don't know when they're going to get paid back. You right. can't, and you have no control over them right. getting paid yeah, back. Yeah, it could that's... take, it could take a couple weeks. It could take a yeah, month. That's, I would never do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And so, that's and the other, and the other option was you get a thousand dollars to either, either, and I could have just not had my stuff shipped back. That was another option, Jared. You know, <laughs> of course, that's always an option. You know, and I would have <laughs> spent zero dollars and I would have gotten a thousand dollars. But the other thing is too is I had a couple electronics there that I think were worth getting shipped back. Um, you know, I had an iPad there, uh, some guitar stuff there. Mm-hmm. I had a guitar, a beautiful guitar my girlfriend bought me um, for Christmas that I really, really want back. This means I get a focus, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. You probably will. Um, but still, my no, the, no, no, the no. other headphones I had for the podcast that are nicer headphones will be getting shipped mm. back. I have another microphone, a couple uh, XLR cables, all sorts of stuff. So, And, and I had my suit right. and some stuff with sentimental value, some gifts from you know girlfriend and, and parents parents and family. So, um, and documents too. All my visa documents were still in my apartment. And, oh my gosh. and I'm now in the process of, in this entire shit show, trying to apply for a new visa. Um, mm-hmm. um, we'll, we'll do a reveal the next episode. Yeah, yeah. Next episode, we, we're, we'll do a reveal. <laughs> yeah. um, job reveal for the next episode because yeah. things have been uh, slowly panning out. But anyways, so back to, um, oh shoot, where were we going before this tangent? Um, we were talking about customs. That's what this episode is about. Mm. But... <laughs> um, them asking them to pay and you paying for your right. Uh, so so I paid for it. I think just, it was. I worth just didn't it. know your stuff. We yeah. you, we just went on a full tangent because right. yeah. I didn't realize. That. So so I'm pretty psyched about that. My stuff is finally coming back eventually. Uh, did have to fill out quite a few forms, but I think the other thing is too, Jared, is if I would have had my thing shipped back via China Post, it would have taken just as long, and I would have been able to ship maybe a box, mm. and I would have probably paid about a thousand dollars. And electronics cannot be shipped yeah. out of China unless you use a moving company. Because yeah. a moving company, I think the way they do is they go through Hong Kong and then to New York. Yeah. And they're big, giant shipping containers. Um, and that also, in a way, makes me feel more comfortable because I saw them pack everything up. I know the stuff is in good boxes. It should come back here safely. Sure. Um, yeah. You know. I, I, yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, there's no reason to um, to be concerned about, about that. Right. That 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 wouldn't concern me. Right. Anyways, let's let's get back though to the uh, the topic today. Um, you know, ways that Americans can be seen as offensive abroad. Some oh, offensive habits. Oh, I mean, an obvious one. Yeah. Our our obsession with flags. Oh, yeah. You know, that's an interesting one though, Jared, because a lot of other countries also do the same thing. Oh yeah, maybe I'm just thinking about Germany. Germany doesn't really do that. Right. Only for like f- soccer matches. Yeah. Almost at football matches. Yeah. But. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think maybe more the, but I feel like, no, I, no, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you. Okay. Have you ever been in, um, 
Have you ever been in Czech Republic and seen a little Škoda Octavia with one of those giant flag, oh, no. the giant full size flag waving off the back? You're right. We we <laughs> in America, our use of the flag is definitely on. Have steroids. you ever seen it? I actually, I was just driving here today and I saw a Toyota for, Forerunner, and I'm sure you've seen this before. You know how they like sort of tint the right. back, the very back window to ha- to look like the American flag. Have you ever seen that with the oh yeah with the with Plenty the flag? And uh, have you ever seen that outside of here? No, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. No. Yeah, we, we do flags on steroids, <laughs> yeah. for sure. I would agree with you, but I but I think most Americans who travel, I don't think they, well, they hopefully yeah. take that abroad. Yeah, um, but there are I, those there are those people that I have, I mean, like, I, I don't know if he did it. I don't remember. But, like, I remember when I went to France for um, uh, this that school program thing I did mm-hmm. in college, this one guy uh, wanted to, had a shirt, that, you know, the back-to-back World, uh, world oh, War God, Champs. that's and such he, a... I don't know if he wore it. I don't shirt. remember, but uh, but something like that Americans would wear in the U.S. Oh, for sure. So in the once US, again, I would respectfully disagree. Yeah, I, I, you're right. You are 100 like, percent right. Like, yeah, obviously, at every level, it gets toned down a little bit. They're not right. going to be. They're not going to roll up a or properly fold up a full size flag and put it into their luggage just to hook up to their rental car. Right. <laughs> Probably not. But I also feel a little weird even wearing. I don't mind wearing stuff that says like USA or Michigan or something. But like wearing I don't, an American flag abroad makes me feel a little weird. You know, it's interesting. I'm not afraid. It's interesting that you say that because I have no problem repping a state. But I feel uncomfortable repping the U.S. Like I have okay. a Colorado hoodie. I mean, it's the flag of Colorado. It's, it's a cool not, hoodie. It doesn't though, say too. Colorado. It's got the seat. and it's like a crew uh, crew neck, and I love it. Um, and uh, I have I probably have other stuff, but I like I don't I don't have a problem with Michigan stuff. Right. But I, I would feel uncomfortable wearing like some sort of American flag. Thing. See, I have a couple workout shirts that are like USA Olympic ones. Um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that. That's but see, cool. that's different. Um, yeah, that's not the American. It's more flag. like a jersey, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of um, cool. Yeah, it is. It is interesting though, too, just because um, I think when you do wear a flag abroad in some places, if you're in a country that doesn't have the best relations with the United States or agrees with our yeah. government or way of life or our culture, you are putting a target on your back. I think yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, that's true. Um, you know, another one, speaking of hooking these flags up to people's cars and stuff mm-hmm. and really bastardizing the flag, um, something that I know a, lo- a lot of a lot of people in other countries would find of- offensive is our obsession with giant vehicles. Mm. Um, our, our quote unquote need for full size SUVs. The fact that pickup trucks are the an F-150 is the top selling vehicle in the United States. Is it really? I didn't it, know that. But yeah. The top selling. They Yeah. The fact that the um, it doesn't Silverado's me, close by, uh, Silverado and uh, is close behind, <laughs> and like the and like the fact that we just have this sick obsession with with uh, with the biggest possible vehicle and sort of no concern for anything else other than the chance that we might need to, you know, oh I need to tow oh, I might need to tow a trailer once a year like we right. and if you go to Germany you'll see, or Germany if you go to any, really any place outside of the U S you'll see like people towing a camper with like their Volkswagen Golf or something. Right. Yeah, you won't see <laughs> trucks like you do here. Right. Um, you see someone right. like a small like Ford Escape size SUV towing it, a camper. It also turns heads when you're abroad and you are in one of those big cars. Yeah. For mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, it's uh, very tacky. It's, yeah. it's 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 Well, and it's not it's not really it's even it's less ergonomical. practical there. Yeah, it's not practical at all. You yeah. know, you and a lot Most of other countries, countries it's a lot less practical. Other than right. like the, uh, I say one place that's not offensive would be like a lot of uh like the UAE like rich uh, Middle Eastern countries, mm-hmm. there it's not offensive actually. I think there, right? Once it, because they have once again like us. I mean, it's a status thing even too. to more of a even to more an extent here too. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. Status, status, thing. and they have just so much space. Right, I, and they are nice. I mean, my mom has an SUV, and gas and, is cheap in both of these right, places too. Right. That's another thing. Also yeah, but helps. her SUV is is like the probably like the it's it's a smaller it's a, it's size Escape, one. which is yeah. not it's big a smaller at all. one. Yeah, and like like people justify you know like the suburbans and like that sort of thing where it's like i don't understand how we've come to a place where um you can justify an expedition for a family of four it's it's very confusing to me right um so i feel like um you would get a lot of weird looks if you were to pull up in a in some of these vehicles that we love in in uh, your neighborhood You, you know it was a big one that i saw at a lot of countries in asia toyota prius everywhere everywhere Or, or like similar ones, but made by Chinese companies in China as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's yeah because if if you're thinking as practically as possible, which mm-hmm. is also why 
Tory Priests are popular taxis in the U.S. too. Right. Where it's like if you're thinking as practically as possible, especially for city driving, that like it has makes a giant, lot of sense. A giant trunk, mm-hmm. and it it's yeah that makes the most sense, especially right. for what what you're doing ninety percent of the time. Absolutely. I think another thing that a lot of Americans need to do a better job it's of ugly, though, traveling. So you have to live with that. That's true. <laughs> um, I think I'm. I'm okay. It looks kind of like a spaceship on the inside though, so I'm I'm cool. With yeah, it. the tech's good. It's got good yeah. tech. Yeah. Um. So I think though, Jared, a, a big thing that a lot of Americans need to improve on a bit more when they travel is um, trying to get out there and try more local stuff. Like yes. the amount, like, and now don't get me wrong. I am not opposed to the occasional McDonald's run if you're tired and hungry and that's I the only find, thing dude, available. I do. You're right. I find that offensive too. As yeah. an American, uh, I find that offensive. <laughs> People, Americans going to McDonald's and Burger King, right. and, and and look, I went there. I went there when I traveled by train in China, just because like it was like one of the places I could get. Yes, it. but but also you live there for like like. First of all, I imagine you make a habit of it. No, you were traveling and you and. and you were traveling and you live there for a substantial amount of time. I mean, six months is a yeah. I would say it's a. It's long not like time. it's not like it's like listen. You have seven days to experience a, right. a cuisine you've never experienced before, and you're spending it at McDonald's. Right, exactly. Now, I will also say this. Some people might argue, well, it's fun to try the different items while you're there. I would agree. I guess, um, yeah. And, and I will say when I was- uh, it's, all, in, it's pretty close. I mean, they right. have, I'm, oh, I mean, yeah, they know you're just true. They do have different like, like, items like for example, That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, Jared, when I was in Bali, it was so great actually getting KFC there because- well, That's true. Because, See, now I might mm-hmm. contradict myself. Right. Well, <laughs> and that's that's the beauty of the conversation, Jared. You know, you can, you can do this, but- uh, the, the point of uh, what I was saying about Bali is that um, I ate a lot of Indonesian food. You know, I, I would eat it usually at least two meals a day, you mm. know, usually at least breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner. And Indonesian food's amazing. Like get some nasi goreng, which is fried rice with like a chicken leg usually. Ooh, yeah. and, and this really good sambal sauce. I gave you a hot sauce, didn't I? From, yes, you from Bali. You need to is try that what it, that man. Is? It's, yeah, I, it's I, that I don't sauce. know what to use it with. You can use it with, I would say, oh, you chicken know what I with do? rice. Every now and again, I put together like a uh, a bowl where I'll use like farro or quinoa, uh-huh. and then I'll put like some vegetables and chicken in there. I'll just mm-hmm. squirt some in there. Yep. Do that. Stir it up a little bit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to do it Bali style, though, you also got to put a uh, fried egg on top, Ooh. and then it's really, really good. Okay. And yeah. that sauce with yes. the fried egg. Have you been to Holmes here in Ann in, no. in Arbor? Mm-mm. Okay. That's it's like not a, Indonesian food, but, right, but it's a, it's the fried a, egg thing made me think of right. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so the whole point of this was I, I really liked getting fast food in Bali because it was like I was eating Indonesian food for all my yes. other meals. So so KFC had so many different things to try. They had fried chicken. They had fried chicken that had like the spicy seasoning. They had the chitza. Do you know what a chitza is, Jared? You told me, but I don't remember. It looked disgusting, I feel like. It, it looks a lot. You have to look at it on the advertising. I, I remember, I remember we had this conversation, better. but I don't remember but what it yeah, was so like. Chitza is basically it's it's like a like a fried chicken patty, like a boneless fried chicken patty. That's your your bread or your dough of the of the pizza, the chicken pizza. Then they have this really good sauce on top. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure what it is. And then they have uh, onions peppers? and peppers, green peppers and red peppers. I'm not a huge it's fan. It's really oh, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good though, buddy. It doesn't look great. It it's really it, good. It looks like one of those like limited item things they do here in the U.S. Right. But I will say. Um, and to be fair, I also want to slightly take it back, n- not only because you were living there for a bit too, mm-hmm. but also because um, well, not living there, I was only there for sure, a month. Sure, sure, living uh, that's that's uh, aggressive, but um, because if you're talking about, a, I didn't think of, like you got to think also a place like KFC, theoretically, like they do it better in a lot of Asian countries than they do here. Like, oh, for sure, they have neglected KFC USA. Yeah. It is a godforsaken place that no. I no can't tell you American the last time to. I ate at KFC. There are so the many. States. If you want to get there's Popeyes is miles oh, Popeyes better. Is great, and there and, and there Popeyes. are many. I I prefer Chick Fil A. There are so many better chicken alternatives here in the U.S. to right. KFC. But KFC is like a like they, they I feel like they take it to the next level in these countries. At least they what, based off of what I've seen. They the really menus. do, especially in Asia. I mean, in Japan yeah. they have the big KFC Christmas thing. I think they do that in other countries. I, I know it's huge in Singapore too. Right. And, and I can tell you being. Having had KFC in China and in Indonesia, it's great. Yeah. It's really, really, really good. Yeah, I can imagine And I that. never got sick off of it. You know, I got sick off of fried chicken in China once. That was not a fun ordeal. Uh, yeah. Never got well, sick. see, that's also the thing about mm-hmm. living in China and why I also would justify eating at a fast food place is they're like, especially like they're, you're taking another risk too when mm-hmm. you're traveling and you're eating at uh, at 
places, especially in cities that you have you have no knowledge of, right? Is you you're taking slight you're at least taking a slight risk where you probably wouldn't take that risk at a fast food place, right? Absolutely, uh, and you know I have to say, Jared, talking about these like offensive habits or customs of Americans, I think the key to avoiding a lot of these is just think about: um, Are you being a person that you would like to have as a guest? Like if if you invited me to so say so say I'm German and Jared comes to visit me in Germany. Yeah, um, you know, am I gonna want him as a guest? Is he gonna? Want me as a guest? Yeah, you know, this, if I came to visit, this Jared. asshole's gonna stomp in here with his boots on and not right, even get ask. everything muddy and not and, even ask, right? Uh, and and eat all my shoes. food and, and <laughs> go in my fridge without asking. And, yeah, there's. I think there's a lot of stuff. Just think about: Would you want to have yourself as a guest, as yeah. a tourist? Uh, and I think that really helps a lot with a lot of the stuff. Um, you know, being being responsible and being a good tourist when you're abroad. Sure. I think another thing though that's an interesting aspect about American culture, though, Jared, that I don't think you see on the same way is um, the amount of just crazy optimism we have here in the States. Mm. And I think to some, oh, yeah. to some extent, it's a, in some ways, it gets a little absurd here, Jared, <laughs> I would say. I mean, I make jokes all the time. Uh, I actually just talked to uh, my Chris Veal a couple days ago. We had a good like, two-hour conversation. Oh, nice. He actually, oh, he had another Chris Veal story. Ooh, we'll talk about it. After. I don't remember it though. Oh. I, need, I'm, I need to jog my memory of what okay. it was, but he definitely had another classic. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. I hope you can remember because I uh, want to hear. He said he has a bunch that oh, he good. could tell me about. But anyway, um, what were we talking about? Um, what did you just say? Amer- American customs. Um, the custom you just brought up. Yep. I'm, uh, Jesus Christ. Now what? it makes sense that I forget because I went right. on a tangent, but you just said it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. The beauty of recording, though, Jared, is. We can listen to it. Did you just pause? No. Oh. Wait, well, why don't you just... Did it, oh, I thought you pulled it up. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think now. Um, be, be a guest in your own country, we were talking about, and then... Oh, the optimism. Yeah. Absurd level of optimism. That's why I brought up Chris. Yeah. Okay. Because th- that's one thing that I always joke about. That's why I brought up Chris. That's one mm-hmm. thing I always kind of joke about. And I guess I'm serious, but it doesn't bother me really. Is that you and Chris are both like just absurdly optimistic and positive. Right. And I think um, it's a very American thing in a lot of ways, though. I think. Just because I, I know positive people from other countries. I'm not trying to say there aren't sure. positive people. But I think we have this weird level of just crazy... I think it's also because we really value individualism in the United States we, over I, collectivism in a lot of regards. Um, I think we're also a little deluded because of our culture of like building yourself up by the bootstraps. I think there's oh, a slight delusion that at any moment you could become rich, you know? Right. Oh, for sure. And there's a lot of Americans, I think, that really believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would, so, I would like to believe that, but and, I just and don't we say think that like, realistically. There, we say that like there's something wrong with it. I, right. Because I think that's healthy, and I think actually that's something... That some is extent, great about it is, here, is that it is yeah. it is possible. Like yeah. it's not impossible. Um, but I remember you also talking about when you were in the Czech Republic that um, they tended to be like have a darker sense of humor in general and sort of mm-hmm. like be have more. Was would you say like a pessimistic sense of humor? Yeah, pessimistic and sometimes even like a little bit of um, what is it self um, depreciating humor? Oh, uh, yeah, self deprecating um, yeah. humor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love that. It's, yeah, it's just different. Yeah, different lens through through culture, I guess. Um, but I think we tend to be optimistic. And I think on some regards that's good because I remember having a talk with my mentor's mom uh, in the Czech Republic. And now remember, this is me as an American. She's a older Czech woman that, that was born, I believe, right after World War II, mm-hmm. right when all these Germans were living in um, Komutov, where I used to live. And then they were basically kicked out. Some of them were allowed to stay. I think her family was more Czech than German anyways, but they still had German ties. So she spoke German. So that's how I was able to talk to her and connect with her. And she's an amazing woman. Uh, it was really cool, you know, hearing these stories about what life yeah. was like back then. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, and I she imagine. was alive when Russia invaded the Czech Republic, when the Soviet, not Russia, when the Soviet Union. So she, li- yeah, she lived she in lived Czechoslovakia. All yeah, she was yeah. in Czechoslovakia. She was when, yeah, exactly. And so my whole point for this story, though, is I remember her telling me um, that she had never met someone that was so positive and optimistic like I was, <laughs> and in a way, it didn't. In a way, it didn't really surprise me. Did it feel me, like a compliment? It did. Yeah, she said. But, she, but you guys had already. I mean, you, you, she, had, you guys had already built up a rapport. Right. We had whatnot. talked. Yeah. We had had quite a few conversations. Exactly. Um, but but I think I agree with her. I do try to really be positive, and I think I was talking to uh, 
Jason, uh, one of our old professors at Albion College, mm-hmm. you know, that's really how Jared and I met. Yeah. It was funny because I was, I had mentioned the podcast to Jason. Also, late shout out, but shout out to Jason uh, yeah. Moritz. He's an awesome guy. Uh, it was great Bring talking to you and catching up with you. Um, but the whole point of this was I was talking to him. And at first I mentioned you to like somebody that who, who wouldn't know you because mm-hmm. I was talking about the podcast. I said, yeah, I'm doing this podcast with Jared. And then I stopped for a second. I'm like, wait. You know Jared. Yeah, I was going to say, does he remember you, me? Yeah, oh, yeah, he and he said to tell you hello. Because my memory, well. I remember him, but I had to be my memory had to be jogged at first. Sure. Well, yeah, it's been quite a few yeah. years, you know. Um, but, yeah, and so it was it was really great talking to him and catching up with him and uh, mentioning, you know, you in the podcast. Um, and what he mentioned, though, is I'm the type of person where I tend to be very positive, but I also put myself out there. And yeah. he says when you have those two factors going for you, you're going to get a lot more good opportunities than you will bad. Yeah. And I, I agree yeah. with him. I mean, I've had bad opportunities too, that, and I've lost opportunities, but I've had a lot of good ones so far. That's something, I mean, that's something I I, uh, I always try to work on, like, professionally. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I, don't, I do not have that personality, really. And in general, it doesn't bother me, my personality. It's not a bad thing. No, no. You have a but, great personality. But I I could, I could, wow, look at that. Oh, that th- that yellow bird. It was very mm-hmm. beautiful. Um, but it's I, a finch. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but it it's it sort of does slow me down. I feel like it could potentially slow me down in like the workplace and for like mm-hmm. advocating for myself and and um you know allowing like you got to be your, your own those, salesperson putting sometimes. myself in the situations where I can uh you know get that opportunity or whatever. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, but I think I think there's like anything there's good and bad to this. Um, but I think if if there is something that Americans are remembered for you know, coming in contact with people from other countries, I wouldn't mind the stereotype being very optimistic. Yeah, I mean, we do Even get Even overly optimistic. We do get that, that we're... Uh, friendly and friendly. overly optimistic, yeah. which I think is good. And I think a lot of Americans are. And I think that's also why there are also... You know, we've been talking about a lot of negative things today yeah. regarding, you know, what Americans do wrong. But I do think there are a lot of things that we do right. Sure. I mean, um, we're, mm-hmm. I, I don't think we're the worst country in the world. No. And I don't think we're the worst tourists in the world either. No. No, by any means. Um, I, no. I'm, I don't think it's worth having that argument, though. Who, who is? I, I know, I know. <laughs> but I know. But yeah, it's all. It's all. It's. I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'd guess. No, I'm not gonna guess. I changed my mind. Right. Um. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Well, Jared, you know what I think we should do now is uh, we never picked a song, you know. Exactly. So I think what we should do right now is I think we should uh, pause the recording real quick. We can. No, I. I no, I know no? which one I want to pick. Okay, and I want to. I, I remember you telling me before uh-huh. you wanted to get you, like you. Uh, you said there's one that you like more than the yeah. other, uh-huh. and I imagine it's the first one. It is. That's the one I like more too. It is. You know, Jared, can we try something a little different today? Since sure. we're not in a time crunch, we only have this one audio track. Sure. You know, we have less, so much less simple, moving. Simple. Yeah, yeah, yes. it's way more simplified today. Can we listen to that song? Sure. Let's just I play can. it and let our listeners listen to it. And I mean, look, we're, it's not like we're making money off of YouTube, anyways. And most of our listeners listen elsewhere. Uh, But I do think before we play it, Jared, can we give full credit to the artist? So the artist is Cliff, uh, and the song is called Muse. Yes, and it's Mm -hmm. short, too. Yeah, it's uh, about two minutes. So I'm going to turn down my mic, uh, and I guess you can figure out how we can... How should we play it? I can play it through my... um, Through your mic? Through my uh, speakers. Perfect. But uh, w- hold on. Tell me what you like about the song first, because I have to. Sure. I have to do. So- I have to. Sure. You have to finagle it. Yeah. No problem. Tell me what you like. What about I like it. about it. So, well, first of all, this oh, is a. No, I don't have to finagle. I just started okay. playing. There we go. But this is what I would consider a lo-fi um, song. I lo-fi. would say lo-fi yes. Japanese kind of. It, it almost style. feels like a. Now I don't. I don't mean to be rude, because uh-huh. but it almost sounds like a like a like a royalty-free beat. Kind of, you know. Okay. Like I feel like, uh, like yeah, d- it's just a standard beat. Yeah, yeah, that he's mm-hmm. sampling for sure. Yeah. But then what he does in the layers. Uh, well, I I don't know if it's a he or she. What they do, what Cliff does with the song with the layers and it, it is short, but I think it's still a really fantastic, you know, two minutes of just you know listening pleasure. Really. Yes, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And um, I was I, when I was listening to it, I was almost kind of bummed. I was like, oh man, it's over. Right. Because it is only like two minutes. But uh, here, here it is. This is uh, Muse by Cliff. This is Muse by Cliff.
was very impressive timing. Uh, I like the song. Great choice. Thank you. Um, it's it's it. I, I could definitely have the sound in the background. You know. Oh, absolutely. Vibing out. Absolutely, and and uh, Cliff has a ton of stuff on YouTube uh, and Spotify. Um, so so check out his entire catalog. Well, I keep saying his. Yeah. Check out their I entire understand. catalog. It's it's a um, heart. We've been right. We've been programmed. Ex- yes, we have. Um, but yeah, it's a good <laughs> song. It definitely. I love the. I think those are some type of flute. I think. I'd imagine. What else would I it think? be? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just has this really cool modality to it. I mean, it in a way, uh, it f- makes me feel like I was in a I was in a tea shop in the Czech Republic a few years back. Uh, tea houses are very popular in the Czech Republic, mm. uh, and they were playing music kind of with this similar kind of vibe. Uh, that would have been a cool place mm-hmm. to go to. Yeah, tea houses. Well, we didn't cool. have a, we barely had a second to stop while we were. We were running <laughs> when we were when we were there. But you know, hopefully, maybe in a year or two, we can go back there. Yeah, uh, I would love to. Yeah, um, without a doubt. I mean, I'm definitely. I, I definitely now more than ever have a strong need to go now that my, it got taken away from me. Right. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah. So, anyways, for all of our listeners out there who enjoyed that, check it out on our Song of the Pod playlist on YouTube. Untranslatable podcast. Uh, we know you'll enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It is an instrumental, so if you're looking to sing along, this might not be the one for you. But if you're looking yeah. for a beautiful instrumental, unless you can play the nose flute, out. that's true. <laughs> you might be able to do that. That is true. Then I think this is perfect for you, right? Or you could beatbox. Oh, that's true. I mean, I've been I've been debating trying to play guitar over it. I think it'd be fun to like try to record oh, some yeah. guitar music over yeah, top yeah. of it. Speaking of music, uh, stay tuned, people. We're gonna have some mu- new music coming your way hopefully soon. Oh uh, yes, I've that's been, true. Been trying to whip up some new stuff, so stay tuned. Um, well, Jared, I uh, actually have a confession. I don't have a Russian War of the Pod today. That's okay. Because my plans, unfortunately, have been curtailed, and I will not be able to go to Russia come September. Uh, I thought we were going to talk about that next episode. We are not going to do the job reveal. I just said I lost one job. Oh, I got I you. haven't I got revealed you. where I will be hopefully got going. That is so, a bummer. Yes. So um, no Russian War of the Pod. Um, how do they tell you, by the way? Uh, they, they, they emailed, call us, you or email they emailed you? us and notified us. Once again, they notified us of a few different options, um, but I'm still not sure yet. You know, there's just so many question marks that yeah. uh, I'm not really sure. But the, at least what they can tell us is there is no likelihood of it happening in the fall. Oh, good. Uh, I was slated to go <laughs> to Vladivostok in three months, uh, which will not happen, uh, which is a bummer. I was really looking forward to experiencing Russia and Russian culture um, and be there with my girlfriend. But uh, we're looking for another place, and stay tuned, uh, and we'll let you know. And then we will have some new foreign words of the pod for you next episode. So yes. we are sorry today, yes. but stay tuned uh, for our next episode dropping, and you can enjoy some new ones. So a quick recap of today's episode. Uh, I think some things that Americans uh, should avoid when they are abroad that might be considered offensive is uh, definitely wearing their dirty shoes uh, if they're visiting someone's house. Yes, for sure. Be careful with that. Yes. Um, oh, one that I also forgot to mention today, Jared, that's very important, especially for you and I as lefties, is do not hand oh. and give stuff with your left hand. That's a big one because See, in a lot of cultures, they uh, the left hand is used for wiping reasons. Right. So you don't want it oh, considered right. rude to give or eat with your See, left that, hand. And that's really tough because I never think about that. Right. Like in, in, in the U.S., there's no sort of custom or culture around which hand. I mean, granted... Well, no. I mean, granted, I mean, there kind of is. There's left. We should do are, a lefty let's be episode. Clear. Let's be clear. Yes, lefty. Oh, because, yes. Because yes. Lefty episode. Because let's be clear. Cool. Lefties are secondhand citizens. I'm not saying we're not. Ned Flanders. But I've once again a, a, a cultural blind spot for me. Mm. I did not watch a lot of Simpsons. Simpsons guy. Gotcha. I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm really striking. Yeah, out Goku here. from DBZ was left-handed. <laughs> Aang from Avatar. No, I'm just making that up. But Jared wouldn't know. But yeah, I, I, we could have a whole conversation, especially since like uh, back in the day, your dad was uh, mm-hmm. did try to beat it out. Out of them. Yep. We should do an, a lefty episode okay. for sure. Okay. Uh, for sure. Well, cool. Uh, I already have so many ideas for that. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, but handing people things with your left hand in some cultures, uh, African cultures, Asian yeah. cultures can be And you really rude. have to focus on that because right. we do not think about right. that at all for the most part. I, I think, imagine. though, if something like that happens, to be honest, like I think of, I, I really think if you do it in a country like that and they know you're a foreigner, I'm willing to bet, though, too. Like it would eventually be like become a joke. Yeah. Like people would tell you. Hopefully they would tell you and correct you, and you would also be smart like the enough first to time, tell. Like right. the first time they're like, yeah, I mean they don't know. Right. Uh, but they, the, right. People, uh, people from outside realize that. Right. Like they're not totally uh, unaware of what we're doing over here. But so, that's why people come to the Untranslatable Podcast to get this information uh, as well. So, 
So, yeah. Um, what are some other things, Jared, we talked about? Uh, offensive American habits or customs. Uh, we're loud. Yep. You know, that that might bother some people. Yep. In um, public transportation, keep your voices down, I would say. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember. I mean, we couldn't remember. Oh, um, our uh, positivity. Yeah. I, I think that's not necessarily a, a bad thing. Oh, tipping. Tipping is tipping, a big one. Sure, yeah. Make sure mm-hmm. you do your research about tipping. I would say it's safe yep. to say in most Asian and not countries, just tipping, right? Not just tipping, but how you handle finances with friends. Yes. So, like, yes. If, if 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 you if your friend is giving you money back That's for something point. or whatever, mm-hmm. if, and if they want to give you exact change, let you know, let, let them. them. Let yeah. them. Exactly. Yeah, I would agree. That's a great point, Jared. Thank you for bringing that yeah, up. Yeah, man. I so, remember what we talked about. Right? So so uh, <laughs> let us know what you thought of today's episode and if you know of any other um, cultural differences or things that Americans can do that gotcha. are controversial abroad at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. Check us out on Twitter, untranslatable1, the number one for lots of great content there. Uh, also, please uh, check us out on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast, for clips, uh, pics, and some music as well. Uh, and obviously, if you're listening to us, you know iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all that good stuff. But please let us know how we can make this podcast better for you and give us five star reviews. So, can you? Uh, oh, I guess you can't. Yeah, hit the no, music this time, today, can you? See, this time we'll have to do it in post. I'll have to do it. Right.